Hi, my name is Christina Maria Gadar, and I'm filming this workout today so that if you are stuck at home due to the pandemic of coronavirus, you can still stay healthy and keep your body moving because I truly believe that Pilates has curative powers. So we're going to focus on the pre-Pilates exercises. Some may not be considered pre-Pilates, but most of them are. And they're all done sitting in a chair. So you're going to want to start sitting near the front edge of your chair. And you're going to focus on your powerhouse, that band around your middle, your lower abdominals, your seat muscles, the low back, and the tops of the inner thighs. So to access your abdominals, I want you to focus on that image of zipping up tight pants. So it's more than just pulling your belly button in, it's pulling it in and up. And I know that some people might fortunately not know what it's like to have to zip up tight pants, but I for one know what that's like, and I think most of us do. So imagine you're zipping up tight pants as you engage your abdominals. And then for your seat muscles, you're gonna also squeeze in and up. You don't have to force it, but you wanna make sure that you're not relaxed. So no pancake batter, just squeeze and lift. And you can use the image of squeezing toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. So you are the paste coming out of the tube as you squeeze and lift. For your inner thighs, whether your legs are together or apart, even if they're apart, you can energetically draw your inner thighs toward this midline. So that's what I want you to bring your attention to now, is your stomach muscles, your seat muscles, and your inner thigh muscles. And despite the fact that we're not going to do anything standing today or lying down, you're going to still keep your powerhouse engaged for all of these exercises. Keep in mind that you should always consult with a doctor before doing an exercise program. Most of this is for my students, but this is open to the public. So most of you who are doing Pilates will probably find that this is safe for you and know how to modify according to your body. So now that we've brought our focus to the powerhouse, we're going to start with exercises for the feet. And we're going to work from the feet all the way up to the top of the head. So I'm going to use a towel to get started with the footwork. And we're going to use this towel as a guide, but you don't need to have a towel to do it. If you did have a towel ready nearby, you're going to start sitting with your heels just off the towel, your feet and knees apart, and you're going to lift the toes up and spread them out. And then you're going to reach forward with your toes and pull that towel toward you, creating a dome shape in the feet. And you're going to repeat, pulling that towel in toward you. Now, if you don't have a towel, that's totally fine because you can do the same thing without it, lifting the toes up, spreading them out, drawing the toes in toward your arches, like I'm doing with my hands, but you're doing it with your feet, and this is very good to work the arch of the foot. Now you can do it in the reverse direction, pushing the toes out like you're digging your toes in the beach, the sand of the beach, and pushing it away from you. Now when you create this dome shape, you want to have daylight on the outer blades and inner blades of your feet. Enough space to imagine a little tiny snail traveling right underneath your arches. You can also do this alternating, so you can pull that imaginary towel or that physical towel toward you, and then you can alternate pushing it away from you, almost like your feet are in a race to see which foot can push it farthest first. All right, so the point of that footwork with the towel or without the towel, just doing the movement, is to strengthen the arches of the feet and work the articulation of your feet. The arch is considered the powerhouse of the foot in Pilates. The next exercise we're going to do for the feet is called toe tapping. This is great to work the nerves of the feet. It's specifically, especially good, I should say, to, to use if you have no neuropathy in your feet. So you're going to engage your powerhouse. This requires a lot of powerhouse strength because I don't want to see you lean. You're going to raise your heels. You can keep your arms long. And you're going to start tapping your toes and keeping your frame nice and even. So start tapping the feet. Keep the stomach pulling in and up. This is a powerhouse exercise, like I said, and also for circulation in your feet, and then relax. So the toe tapping exercise is a wonderful one to get the circulation going in your feet, to work the nerves on the bottoms of the feet, and to work your powerhouse. And by the way, the frame that I refer to are when you connect the dots from shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, and from each shoulder to its respective hip. So that box should stay even as you do that toe tapping, no compensating. Next, we're going to work on exercises for the knees in a seated position. 
So we're going to do exercises that my teacher Romana referred to as TV exercises. Again, you're going to be very careful to keep the box, the framework of your upper body intact, and you're going to lift one knee up. And you're going to hold it, and you're going to keep your stomach pulled in without leaning back, and you're going to place it down. That same foot is going to go back up. You can also use opposing lines of energy. Push down through your bottom foot, lift up through your raised knee. And relax. And do a third one on that same leg. Lift. The bottom foot is hanging like a rag doll. And down. Now we do the other side. Push down through your bottom foot, pull up through the working knee. And lower it. And lift that same knee up again and hold. Stomach muscles should be engaged. Your seat muscles are working as well. And lower. And a third time on that second side. And lower. Now if you had one side that was a little bit more challenging, you could repeat. Usually you would start on the weaker side, do the stronger side, and finish with the weaker side again. If that felt the same to you, we will move on and on to the next exercise because you don't need to do an extra set. Okay? Only if you have a weaker side. So we've done the feet, we've worked the knees, now let's do a little bit to work the hip sockets and the muscles around the hips. So what you're going to do is keep your feet parallel and apart. You can judge parallel by the outer edges of your feet, staying straight, no turned out or pigeon toes. And you're going to put your hands on the outer edges of your thighs. And you're going to press your outer thighs against your hands with your stomach pulled in, seat active, and release. Your hands are resisting the pressure of your thighs as you press out and hold. Two, Three, release. I'm definitely trying to squeeze my seat as I do this. Squeeze the seat and push out against the hands that resist the pressure. After three sets, we cross the hands. The palms go on the insides of the inner thighs and we do the reverse direction. Your hands resist the pressure and your inner thighs press in with your hands resisting, your seat squeezing and release. Engage the seat and the stomach muscles and release and press in and hold. Two, Three, release. We've worked the feet, we've strengthened the knees by strengthening the quadriceps, those thigh muscles on those TV exercises, and we've now strengthened the areas around the hip sockets. So now I'd like to do an exercise to strengthen and stretch your back. Typically with pre-Pilates we do this lying down where you have back support. So if you are able to get to the floor, you can just simply lie down and hug one knee to your chest. But if you're already doing the tree in the Pilates studio, you're going to be fine doing this next exercise. So you're going to bring one foot in a little bit toward your midline, and you're going to stack the hands of your hand. You're not going to interlace your fingers. You're going to stack your hands under your thigh and keep your body lifted, mindful of your powerhouse, mindful of your frame, staying even. And this is an exercise for your back, so your back is sitting tall. Sit right up on your sit bones, float your foot up, two, three, and down. Now, if that's too much, just simply hug the knee to your chest for three seconds and release. You can do that too. But if you're ready, you keep the knee there and you float the foot up. Stretching the back of the thigh is excellent for keeping the back also nice and limber. So a lot of times when we see people with tight hamstrings, they tend to have a tight back. So three times is fine. We'll do the other side. Stack the hands. Get the thigh to the chest, your ribs to your thigh, sit as tall as you can on your sit bones, stomach muscles in and up, float your foot up like a rag doll, and let it come down. Remember, the focus isn't about straightening the leg, it's about stretching the spine, but you get the added bonus of stretching the back of the leg as well, without sacrificing the stretch in your back. Next, we're going to work on hands, and a lot of these exercises for the hands will then trickle into the arm muscles as well. We're going to start with finger flicks. So we're going to curl the fingertips into the palms with the thumbs curled over the fingertips, and then you're going to snap the fingertips out, and this is a brisk and crisp movement with the fingertips flicking the thumb. And this is an exercise that my Russian ballet master gave me when I used to dance with the Sarasota Ballet Company can rest for a little bit. You'll see that it really works. He gave this to the dancers uh, when we started our season, when we were off for a few months. This was to help us not only strengthen our arms, but to build our stamina. So this is not easy stuff that you're doing sitting in a chair. Make no mistake about it, this is work. And you're working your arms, and you're working your fingers, and rest. The next exercise that I'm gonna have you do for your fingers and for your arms as well 
I refer to as the floreo. Romana, my teacher, she loved to eat al fresco and she loved to go to restaurants that had entertainment and specifically she loved uh, flamenco dancing. So this is inspired by that type of dancing. You're gonna have your arms around a big beach ball. You're gonna bring your fingertips toward you. Then you're gonna roll your wrists down, point your fingertips away from each other, and then the backs of the hands face you as your fingertips come toward the midline. Now you're gonna push the fingertips apart. Notice I'm not moving my elbows. Draw your fingertips down, and then go back to your home position, that hug. So your stomach muscles are pulled in, your seat muscles are active, you're making sure that you're not arching your back or opening your rib cage. We'll go again, bring the fingertips toward you. Let them come down as you roll the wrists. Rotate your wrists farther as your fingertips face out, and then bring the fingertips toward each other, palms are facing out. The other way you can do this, this is the way a female flamenco dancer would, would do this movement, is she would bring the middle finger toward the thumb. Imagine you're grabbing, a, delicately grabbing a butterfly, and then you roll the wrist down, and then as you come back to home position, you release that butterfly. And then you again initiate with the middle finger coming toward the thumbs, and then the fingertips down and around, and then you here with the palms facing out. One more time, the fingertips reach out, the wrists roll down, and you come back to home position and rest. Works your arms, works your fingers, wonderful for posture as well. The next exercise is obviously uh, inspired by flamenco dancing as well. Uh, Clara Pilates, use, uh, it's rumored, I don't know how true this is, it's rumored that she did this exercise to help her rheumatoid arthritis in her hands. So. We're gonna go back to that position where your arms are hugging a big beach ball, and you're going to use your little fingers to tap your palms five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then the ring finger. One, two, three, four, five. Lift in and up in the powerhouse. Middle finger. One, two, three, four, five. Index. One, two, three, four, five. Be extra careful with the thumbs. One, two, three, four, five. Start again in four. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Careful with those thumbs. And three, two, one. Three, two, one. You could get fancy. You could bring your arms up to frame your face, but you don't have to. We're going to go in two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Squeeze your seat, lift your powerhouse, and roll, roll roll and rest. So castanets, I should have mentioned a little bit before the exercise, but in case you don't know, those are musical instruments that are used by flamenco dancers, by flamenco musicians. They, they look like halves of a shell, either made of wood or plastic, attached to a cord, and you use them by tapping your fingers to make uh, certain rhythms and music. And this is something that uh, can be done, especially if you want to get that circulation going in your fingers. For the next exercise, we're going to focus entirely on the arms. So although the other ones work the fingers and the arms, this is just the arms. You're going to have your arms open, but you're going to make fists. And then you're going to draw your knuckles together and press. And imagine you're creating an electrical charge as you draw those arms together. And then release. And again, pull your shoulder blades down your back and open your collarbones as you press in. Release, squeeze your seat and lift taller and press in and hold, hold, hold. And three is enough, relax, all right? So remember to keep your collarbones open while you're sitting. Pull your shoulder blades down your back. Imagine your shoulder blades are like, well, in my time going to school, we just used erasers for the chalkboard, but maybe this is now dry board erasers, just sliding down your back erasing all of the tension, or slippery bars of soap sliding down your back. So you want to feel that connection to your back as you move your arms. Next, we're going to go to the shoulders. So with a lot of tension and stress, we tend to, all of us, tend to take it in our shoulders. So we're going to combine the breathing with this exercise. Draw the shoulders up to your ears. Breathe in and hold the breath for three, two, one. Exhale, relax. And Pulling your powerhouse in. Inhale, shoulders to the ears. Exhale, slide those shoulder blades down your back. One more time. Inhale, shoulders up. Breathe out. A great way to release tension. You can do that first thing in the morning when you sit up out of bed.
put your feet on the floor. It's a great way to keep the tension out of your neck as well. Now shoulder rolls. You're going to start with your shoulders rolling forward so that you always finish with your collarbones open. So we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the shoulders up, and round them forward. Two more times. Squeeze the shoulder blades, open the chest. Stomach's pulled in and up like you're zipping up tight pants. And down. And one more time. Squeeze the seat and lift. Levitate off of your seat on your chair and release. Now reverse it. Shoulders come forward to open the upper back. Shoulders come up to the ears. Now open your collarbones. Finish with your chest lifted. Arms are just hanging. And roll the shoulders back. And one more time. Shoulders forward. Shoulders up. Open the chest and come down. Now we're going to work on uh, stretching the neck. Neck and shoulders are very related so to each other, so you're going to notice that the things you already did with your shoulders can also help your neck. Now we're going to work on neck circles. In Pilates, we never do full circles. We don't want to look like an open Pez dispenser with our neck crunch. It, it disrupts the, flow, the blood flow, and it's just not good for the spine. So we're going to focus on the nose tracing a semicircle. So you're going to turn your head to one shoulder, pull your stomach in deeper as you roll your chin to your chest, look toward your belly button, continue to roll your shoulder to the opposite, continue to roll your neck, sorry, and then come back to the center. So let's try that again, turning your head to the other direction first, roll your head down and around to the other shoulder, and then square off. We'll do it two more times. Turn your head, try not to move your shoulders. Pull your stomach in deeper as your chin comes to your chest. Look over your other shoulder and look front. And one more time, turn your head away. Lower your chin. Roll your head over to the opposite shoulder and look front. Now we're going to work on neck rotation. So an interesting thing about moving your neck, if you're slumped, and you try to turn your head, you're definitely going to lim be limited in the amount of the range of movement you have in your neck. So what I like to tell my students is if your shoulders are healthy, you can do this, take your arms up. By taking your arms up, and I even, I like to in incorporate stretching the waistline more by interlacing the thumbs, taking the arms up, that helps you, that increases the, that, that energy of lifting the powerhouse, which improves the posture, which improves the range of movement in your neck. So we're going to take a deep breath in, and exhale, turn your head without moving your shoulders. See what's behind you. And look to the center, breathe in. Exhale to the other side, see what's behind you. Center, let's rest the arms a moment. We'll take them back up, and one more set. Take a deep breath. Exhale as you turn your head, see what's back there. Stomach is pulled in and up, look front. Breathe in again. And exhale, turn your head, isolate your shoulders, and look front, and come down. One more exercise that we're going to do for the neck is to stretch the sides of the neck. This gets the trapezius muscles, especially if you're tense, you're in front of a computer, or using a mobile device, this one tends to be excellent. So you're going to bend your head to one shoulder. Be sure you're still looking straight ahead, and then come back to the center and bend your head and neck to the other shoulder and look front. If you want to increase the stretch as you bend your head over to the shoulder, the side that you're bending toward, you can take that arm, fold it over your head and very gently as the other arm hangs, give it a little deeper stretch. Breathe into it. Come back to the center. Keep looking straight ahead. Bend your head and neck to the other shoulder. The shoulder that you're bending toward is the arm that you use to wrap your arm over your head. And deepen the stretch as your long arm reaches to the floor. Come back to the center. And for the last exercise, I am going to put glasses on because I want to show you how we have worked from the feet to the knees to the hips and the back and the fingers and the arms and the shoulders and the neck. And we're going to finish with working the scalp muscles. We're going to work literally from the feet all the way up to the top of the head. And this is an exercise that Ramana used to refer to as wiggling the ears. 
Yes, it can be fun as a party trick at a, a you know a get together, but it is also great for facial toning. It's wonderful if you have a headache. And I find that if you were to put glasses, sunglasses, or regular glasses on your head, on your face, you're going to notice that. If you try to draw the eyeglass frames toward your eyes and then release, that will get the, the ears moving. So I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to try to draw my lenses. My daughter, Thais, 11 years old, is taping. You might want to zoom in and see if I can get these glasses or my ears to move. I can feel it. You might not see it. I'm going to pull them in now. Pull in and release. And pull in and release. Maybe I have to turn my head for you to see a little better. Pull the eyeglass frames, the lenses toward your eyes, release. And pull and release. Stomach pulled in and up and draw those lenses toward you and release. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this mild workout that literally worked from the bottoms of your feet to the top of your head. Pilates does have curative powers. I am a true believer in that, and I hope that this will give you something productive to do when you can't get out of the house and do as much of the routine that you're used to. Thank you.